Hello Gauteng, my name is Councillor Kwena Maloto and I will be your host today for this DA Gauteng Town Hall meeting where we will be discussing what really happened during the BU negotiations. I'm joined by our DA Provincial Leader, Soliem Simanga, as well as our DA Provincial Chairperson, Fred Nal. Now, we all know that there was a historic election that happened a few months ago in which we saw the ANC dip below 50% for the first time nationally, as well as 50% uh, here in Gauteng. The voters of South Africa were clear that we needed to work together as political parties to rescue South Africa. At a national level, the DA and the ANC were able to find each other, as well as in KZN, where a government of provincial unity uh, was formed but things were complicated here in Gauteng as many people know and we wanted to as the Democratic Alliance set the record straight here with our provincial leaders who were involved inside these negotiations. Uh, Fred I'd, I'd like to, to start with you if you can just give some background how did we get to this point where we needed to negotiate with the ANC in Gauteng? Well, very similar to what you just said in your introduction, is that um, I think the, the ANC got something like 34% in the province, fell with 16%, they didn't get a majority. We ended up close to 28% in the province. So there's only six seats difference between us and the ANC in the Gauteng legislature, which is a legislature of 80 people. So you need a majority of 41 in order to pass budgets, but also to elect a premier and a speaker and other, some other positions as well. So obviously neither of us had that majority and uh, in such a situation you need to negotiate a coalition or a voting arrangement in order to, to get to some form of stability, otherwise you're going to have an unstable government and unstable legislature going forward. So between the two parties we had 60% of the vote, so it just made sense that we engaged with each other to see if we can reach to some agreement. Um, I think our approaches were slightly different um, in doing that, but in essence that's how how you are forced to to go into coalition uh, negotiations and we were committed to make sure that there's a stable Gauteng government and that's why we were willing to engage with the ANC in the first instance. Sure. Now, <clears throat> Soli, there was a lot of back and forth uh, in, in the media, but can you give us an insight <clears throat> what actually took place during those negotiations? Well, I think we started from a principle of saying that we are not going to negotiate with the ANC or any other party in the media and we had try to keep all the you know the pressure off of us as negotiators by being frank in terms of what we wanted to then engage around and what we wanted to then achieve um in the in those negotiations so what we did initially was we went in and you know we wanted to establish a number of principles now you understand that when you're going into a government whether you want to call it the coalition whether you want to call it a, um uh, you know uh, a uh, um, an arrangement where you know there is a supply, um, you know, um, of of of, of uh, you know consensus, or you 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 backing um, you know a particular party up. There needs to be an agreement, and there needs to be um, you know systems that you put in place. So we wanted to put principles first of all in in place. One, we said let's establish what we're trying to do. Are we going into a coalition or a partnership, whatever you want to call it? Second of all, is how do you then share power? Because here it's clear the voters we're very, very clear that nobody will get over 35%. Therefore, you need to find a way of working together. So how do you work together? Um, you know, are you going to be able to then share power? If you're sharing power, in what way are you going to share power? The third thing is the issue around proportionality that we were putting forward to then say, let's look at the issue of proportionality. KZN did it. That's why they were able to then get going as quickly as they, they were able to then get going. At a national level, they did um, get, uh, get that right. Um, and we wanted to introduce that here. So in case that it worked, by the way, introduced by the ANC at a national level, it worked, um, you know, introduced by the ANC as well. Here in Gauteng, it didn't work because the ANC didn't want it because it would have been put them on the back foot, if you like. Um, so we then said, okay, let's let's find a way in which we're able to then resolve around this issue of proportionality. But while we're doing that, let's look at other principles that we can then discuss and agree on while we're finding each other in terms of the positions. <clears throat> there was also an issue about how do you bring stability? 
because we wanted stability and we wanted longevity. Mm. So not only stability in terms of forming government now, but how do you sustain that? And part of sustaining that is to also agree on, on dispute um, resolution mechanism. So you want to go in there and know that, you know, in any relationship, there will always be dispute. You know, what happens when you and me don't agree on a particular issue? There should be mechanisms that we've already agreed. This is what happens when we don't agree on a principle. There should also be a principle that we were putting forward to then say, we need to hold each other accountable and not only allow or not only leave it to those that are in opposition. What do I mean by that? In principle, we as the DA, we are putting forward to then say, if there's a DA MEC, there should be an ANC or another party who's going to be the chairperson of a portfolio that is overseeing um, you know, the performance of that particular MEC. So these are things that we wanted to put before we even start um, you know, talking to positions. Mm. We wanted to establish a principle which we can or, or principles which we can agree on before you get to then say, you know, these are the positions and this is a, these are the numbers and all of that. And this is why, you know, initially it took a little bit of time to get going because we wanted to make sure that we get that out of the way. And that's, um, you know, what we started doing then. Mm. And and just to, to follow up on that, uh, were you able to find each other on those issues? Because I know during the, the ANC's press conference, for example, they mm. were adamant that, that this wasn't a power sharing agreement, uh, but that this was the ANC provincially inviting the DA to be part of a, a government of provincial unity, even though we, we, we only have a, a six seat difference yeah. between the, the ANC and the DA. And I think that's where the biggest challenge or the problem is, is that you're having an organization that hasn't realized or hasn't internalized the fact that they've, they're, they've lost power. They've lost power. And now you can look at the legislature. They're having a minority government in place. They're hoping to get support from other parties to get reports through, to get budgets passed and all of that. While we were offering a stable working government that is able to then, um, you know, share power. And actually, to be quite honest with you, bring in some reforms. Yeah. We don't want to go, and we've never, we've said this from day one, we are not coming in here to prop the ANC. We're not coming in here to then, you know, help them to continue what they've been doing. Because that's not what we promised our voters. We promised our voters that if we're going to go into government, we will do things differently. We will make sure that there's more accountability. We'll make sure that money that is supposed to be spent is actually being spent where it's supposed to uh, be spent. Not have the 500 million spent at uh, Anglo Ashanti, not have the 427 million rand spent on uh, fumigating empty schools or, you know, you know, things that have transpired, um, you know, here in the, in the, in the province of Gauteng. We wanted to make sure that <clears throat> when we go in, A, there's an understanding that we want to, um, you know, influence the change that we wanted to see. But B, we wanted to also ensure that uh, you know we can easily and quickly begin to then show the residents of Gauteng what um, you know a new government can do. But unfortunately, you know, with the ANC, it was come in, we will dictate to you where you go, what you do, and then if you don't want it, then you know we're not gonna be able to then find each other. Which again, um, which for me goes against the grain of what we were trying to then achieve, because the people of Gauteng said to us, "Listen to us, we don't want to give you power yeah. on your own, and therefore if we're giving you, uh, you know, that um, close a um, uh, uh, percentage to each other." Use it to find each other. Use it to serve us, not to serve yourselves. Use it to find systems and mechanisms that begin to then say, uh, you know, what are you introducing as reforms? But if you're going to then say, I'm in charge, I will tell you where you need to go, how many positions you get, give me names and we'll talk to that later on, give me three names and then see you later on. I mean, that for us wasn't going to wash it. And this is why we say we respect our voters enough we respect the brand that we represent enough to then know that we're not just going to jump into this thing if it's not going to uh, bring in the change that we wanted to to bring in. Mm. Now, Fred Solis mentioned that essentially the DA's offer uh, was to ensure that there'd be stability. Uh, we've seen inside local governments uh, across Gauteng uh, how, how unstable it can be when you don't have you know, a formal coalition uh, uh, agreement. Uh, do you think, you know, given the, the cabinet that uh, Panyaza has now uh, announced with three uh, smaller parties, a minority government, do you think that Gauteng will have that stability that, that the DA was trying to offer? Um, the danger when you go into minority government is that you don't have stability, and we've seen that in Joburg and Ekuruleni, especially in those municipalities which changed governments a few times uh, since the 2021 local government elections. And I think 
what you require is maturity, not just from whoever is in, in the minority government, but also the main oppositions. And as the DA, what we've said is that we don't, you know, even though we're not in the government with the ANC, we don't want to destabilize the government with our voting power. So we don't want a repeat of Johannesburg and we don't want a repeat of Ekuruleni. So we will be a responsible opposition within this whole setup and make and not just being just bring uh, superfluous uh, motions of no confidence or anything like that. Obviously, where we disagree, uh, we will vote against. Where we do agree, we will vote with them. And that's the role of an opposition, which we will play. So the idea is not to stabilize it. I think uh, being the economic hub of South Africa, this province, um, we need to ensure that there is that stability and we have a role as an opposition to play uh, in that regard. But obviously, you know, it will depends. Uh, it all depends on the kind of government um, that Lesufi is running is it an honest government? Are they delivering in term in in the be best interest of the of the citizens of Gauteng? Are they spending the budget correctly? Is there good service delivery? And where these things don't happen, we obviously need to step in um, and try and and use our power to force them in the di right right direction. Mm. Now there was a lot of uh, confusion in the media space. <coughs> Panyaza said that uh, they had an agreement with the Democratic Alliance to say that we take uh, three positions inside mm -hmm. cabinet uh, that they take seven and that then we reneged uh, on that initial agreement was there ever a signed agreement between the anc and the da in this regard there was an initial agreement um, that basically came down to those numbers but there was a condition to that agreement and that condition was that other parties needed to come mm -hmm. into the coalition as well and in our second last negotiation, we made it very, very clear to the ANC that if we walk in and there's three DA people and seven ANC people in the cabinet, we will walk out because um, if it's really a government of provincial unity, there needs to be other parties as well. In other words, there needs to be proportionality in terms of the seats, because if you go on strict proportionality, there should be out of the 11 positions in the cabinet, which includes the premier and 10 MECs, um, it will have to be six for the ANC and five for the DA. And then what you do is you say, okay, when another party comes in, the ANC gives a seat to that party. When the second party comes in, the, the DA gives a seat to that party. And we basically worked on that formula and said, well, okay, you know, if we're going to have, have at least two parties, then we are willing to live with the, with the three. But it became very clear to us um, that the ANC was not planning to do this. They wanted to keep a majority positions to themselves. Um, in order to satisfy their own internal um, dynamics in order to give more people jobs and that they were that they were looking only at a token one other small party to to give that position to so the the um, agreement was never signed um, because they want they wanted to to make the changes um, and although you know we were initially trying to accommodate them uh, we didn't have a mandate in order to to make those changes what you must also realize is that the initial agreement was achieved before there was a statement of intent signed and that statement of intent was literally signed um, as the chief justice called for uh, the nomination of a speaker in, in the national assembly and um, the deputy chief justice in in Hateng was also basically calling at that stage so it was a very last minute thing so the situation did change after that. After it wasn't signed, um, we we went back to the negotiation table and said, look, um, tell us who the other parties are that's going to come in. And mm -hmm. they only indicated to us that they wanted one other party to come in. And we said, well, that's not a, uh, we're not agreeable to that. Um, and then we said that um, agreement is off the table now. We're revoking that, that agreement and we wanted to base the coalition of Hating on the statement of intent that was signed nationally. So there must be proportionality. Uh, we need to speak about how decision making will happen in the cabinet and all these kind of things. So that was the process up until up until till that point. And um, yeah, there was after one or two engagements, uh, there was just silence from the other side. Mm. And only last Monday that they actually come back to Soli to say you know okay let's let's have a quick chat about this because i wanted to announce the cabinet last monday and um this is one of the negotiation tactics of the anc is to give leave everything to the last minute and try to push you into a corner so that you've got to make a, a decision that that's very rash and we weren't willing to do that in those circumstances sure now Sally, you you made mention earlier 
uh, of of Panyaza requesting three names uh, from you. Uh, was this in regard to specific portfolios inside the cabinet? Uh, can you just expand on that statement? So this is why, again, we said we were not willing to sacrifice ourselves, um, you know, in a manner that the ANC thought that we would. One is that when we, when we while we're still negotiating, we are told, uh, you know, yeah, we hear about your principles. We hear all these things, but give us three names. And I'm like, no, can we agree on the principles and can we agree on the portfolios? They said, no, give us the portfolios that you want to then get involved in and then we'll take it from there. And I'm like, no, no, no. Can we discuss the portfolios? Because, you know, you, you want to then ensure that you're also able to then get into portfolios that will be able to then also assist in giving you the impact that you want to then deliver. <clears throat> So they said, no, give us the three names. In a letter, by the way. So if they dispute that they ever said that, then, you know, we'll make the letter available. So they said to us, no, give us three names because the premier is supposed to be making an announcement. And we said, but that's not how it's supposed to go. It didn't go like that with the president, between the president and, and, and John Stanison as the leader. Mm -hmm. There was an engagement in terms of the portfolios and why, the rationale, why we wanted to get into those portfolios and, you know, what we would hope to then achieve in those portfolios. And, uh, you know, that was not something that they were willing to listen to. It was like, give us the three names, whether you give us the three names or we go and announce without you and without whatever portfolios that we will be making announcement on that will be vacant for you, then you can come and fill them up because you wouldn't have given us names. And then we said, well, if that is the attitude and this is how you want to go about it, then please go ahead and make all 10 announcements and leave us out because I still maintain we are not coming to this as beggars. We're not carrying a begging bowl and saying, uh, oh, you know, we, we, we want to be part of this government. The people of Gauteng have spoken, have given us 28% of the votes. The biggest parties only got 34% of the vote. Therefore, you come in with a mandate. And your mandate is not to beg. Your mandate is to form part of government. Your mandate is to go in there and effect change. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if you're going in there and you're told that, no, we will decide what portfolios. And, you know, I love because... I feel that we have been uh, actually vindicated as the DA. You look at the, the, the three portfolios that have actually been given to the smaller parties. Those have all been hollowed out. They're not going to be able to then do anything. In fact, when we did an analysis, those portfolios combined, the three portfolios combined, <laughs> only contribute or only have about 2% of the Gauteng's budget. 2%. So the whole 98% is actually gone to, um, you know, the ANC and what they want to then do and control. Um, and this is why we have said we're not going to go in there just to rubber stamp decisions. We're not going to go in there just to continue doing things as they have been done because we would have failed the people of Gauteng. So we went in there and said, if you want to engage, engage us meaningfully. If you want to go and talk about portfolios, you want to talk about how do we then stabilize um, government. But over and above that, how do we then you know, discuss the issues that we want to then discuss around the, the change that we want to then bring. I promise you, you cannot bring change when everything that you're going to be bringing in a cabinet is going to be voted down on. Because basically that's what is happening. Fred talks about the 7-3. It's actually 8-3. Because now the Premier will also have a deciding vote in there, plus 7 of the MECs and the 3 that they wanted to then give us. Therefore, you have 8 people that are now ganging against 3 people, while you only have a 6% difference between the two of you. That, for me, doesn't make sense. And unfortunately, there are such certain people in Gauteng that don't get it as yet. They see the DA hasn't, as have, um, you know, dropped the ball. They should have gone into government. They should have done this. But this, this will be the same people that would have been blaming us two, three months down the line and say, but you're in government, but we're seeing things continuing to be the same. Forgetting that you are saying, go in there and be a weak um, representative of us, the voters. And we said, no, we can't do that. If we go in there, we have to go in there not to cause... Um, you know, disharmony and, and, and not to be able to then govern properly, but to make sure that those changes that we really want and, and are yearning for as residents of Gauteng can actually then be implemented. And this is what, to, you know, we said to, uh, you know, we saying to the residents of Gauteng to then say, 
under the circumstances which were presented by the ANC, we wouldn't have or we wouldn't be able to then save you. We will be swallowed. We will be drowned out. We would be, um, you know, patronized in terms of the portfolios that would have been given to us, as we have seen now. I mean, what is the Department of Environment? What is it supposed to do if in the greater scheme of things? Because that was never a standalone department. In fact, they didn't even have, a, uh, you know, an HOD on its own because there was an understanding that it needs to be married with other departments for it to have an impact. Department of EGov. I mean, this was always something that was either uh, married to um, infrastructure development or was uh, married to a uh, COCTA because you need all these departments to be able to then see the rollout of your infrastructure, your IT infrastructure. The Department of Agriculture was never standalone. Gauteng is not a big agricultural um, you know, province. Our geographical space and you know, the, 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 the spatial planning has never really allowed us to be um, you know, a full-on agricultural um, you know, province. But if you then deal with um, an example of um, uh, uh, um, agro-processing, you use your economic muscle to then build a processing plants here. You're able to then bring in, um, you know, um, uh, um, products um, from your neighboring provinces and even, uh, even, if, even if it needs to come from your neighboring countries like your Botswana and all of that. Once you bring that in, you build an, an agro processing plant or plants here, you're able to then drive, you know, a significant um, job creation. You're able to then get the economy going. This is what you normally do. But to take all these things out of these portfolios and then give these hollowed positions to, uh, you know, to, 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 to people that are supposed to be your partners, for me, that is a sign that you not you have never really been engaging in good faith but you were doing this just to then say oh well we've given you a position sit in your corner and keep quiet while we run government mm. no no i agree with you and i'm glad that you've you've mentioned it because i don't think that the da if given those three portfolios that these smaller parties uh, had been given would have been able to affect uh, any real change and i think it, it actually shows a, a integrity uh, that uh, we didn't take positions uh, just to get fancy salaries and blue lights. It shows that, that we are a party that, that really is uh, wanting to rescue uh, Gauteng. But but my, my, my question to you is that, uh, as you said, it mm. seems that the ANC was negotiating in, in bad faith. Why do you think this is? Well, I, I can tell you a number of things. One is that uh, there, there's been so much that have been hidden that once the positions are then made available, Obviously, the, the, the head of that department, who then becomes the MEC, will get a full-on disclosure of what has been happening in the departments. And then you're able to then start seeing and dealing with the rot and correcting the rot um, and, correct, and, and dealing with the, your, your networks that have been there that really, uh, you know, have actually then robbed blind the people of Gauteng. The second thing is that the ANC is fighting an internal battle. There is the Aduele and the other group that, are, that have been fighting amongst themselves. And you can see how the, how, how the provincial government is actually now being carved. So you have Lebaha Mailo on the one end that is now controlling um, finance and, and economic development. And then you're having Tasmin Mutara, who's part of that faction, and you're having others that are on one side. Then you're having uh, uh, Panyaza Sufi, who now swept even powers away from a standalone portfolio, now swept into his office um, in terms of um, uh, um, co uh, um, community safety. And others, I mean, you, you, you're talking about what was happening with the social development space there, some of the things that have been, that, 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 that don't make sense. That has been said, and you're looking at what they've done with this, one of his uh, comrades, uh, uh, Matome Chilwan. Now they've taken um, education and now um, lumped it up with sports and uh, sports arts and culture. So all of that also now talks to how they are now trying to make sure that the two are satisfying their, their two camps. Yeah. But take it a step further. There is also an element of the ANC having five regions and all the regions demanding that they have a representation onto the executive. In addition to that, you have the youth that are demanding a seat. You have the SACP that is demanding a seat. You have labor that is demanding a seat. So this is why they were pressurized to then ensure that they hang on to a maximum number of, 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 of seats there. So quite honestly, it was never really an issue of wanting to genuinely share power. It's an issue of how do we then hold on to power and get to the next election with our two factions and then battling out there. But over and above that, it was an issue of 
how do we then satisfy our own internal um, you know squabbles or or, or, or or demanding partners and unfortunately um the people of Gauteng you know become the biggest loser at the end of it because what is actually going to happen is that we're going to see more battles brewing and playing themselves out and the da luckily was not going to be caught in the middle of it because we're not part of endorsing or rubber stamping the decisions that they're making we're going to be on the outside and we're going to be saying well that is not going to happen if it means that we have to lobby other parties to make sure that we hold them to account and get them straight we will do that if it means that we have to then use the numbers that we have to lobby other parties to come in and demand that certain reports find their way into the legislature certain forensic reports um, you know get to find their way to the legislature budgets that are not talking to what the people of Gauteng the aspirations and the dream of people of Gauteng we can then use our numbers to then get to that um, and then this is why we feel that you know under the circumstances in which the, um, the ANC wanted to bring us in, we were not going to be able to then achieve what we're setting out to achieve now. Mm. And, and to add to what Sally said, I mean, it does sound like there is a, a silver lining. Um, the ANC has announced a minority government. It means to, to pass budgets. Mm. Um, they, they don't have the numbers within themselves. Um, inside the committees, they don't have outright majorities anymore. So you've said that the DA will be announcing a, a shadow uh, cabinet uh, soon um, inside uh, the, mm -hmm. the legislature. What, what impact do you think you'll be able to have in opposition? I think a very big impact. Um, the DA is represented on every single portfolio committee within that legislature, as opposed to many other parties that only have two or three representatives and cannot cover all those portfolio committees. Um, We've gone through an extensive ready-to-govern program, so we know exactly what's going on in every single of those um, portfolios, and our members are well-versed about what's going on there. So we will have at least two representatives on every portfolio committee, so we will be able to do oversight, we'll influence policy, we'll influence uh, recommendations to the legislature as well in terms of decisions that needs to be taken. Um, so we will have a clear line of sight in terms of, of what's going on there. And we can ask the critical questions. Um, so in terms of opposition role, definitely we will be able to, to cover every single portfolio and make sure that, uh, that we keep the, the MECs to account. It doesn't matter which party they're from. Um, they're in government and it is our role as legislators, legislators to, to keep them to account. And and I'd like to maybe if you can expand on something that uh, Solly said um, about uh, the reports that pertain to corruption and yeah. is that something that now with the ANC dropping below fifty percent inside these portfolio committees we can actually do insist on investigations um, into various contracts um, and and then dodgy dealings. Well, both the previous Premier Makura and the current Premier Lesufi both promised in their previous term that they will make those reports public, but um, have actually kept them under wraps um, and have not um, delivered on those promises. So we will definitely use our leverage to make sure that we bring those reports out and that we will force them to bring those reports out. Um, they cannot hide. They they cannot hide it anymore. And I think the you know losing power. We will probably see um, quite a lot more uh, allegations come out. We've already seen some explosive allegations come out in social media uh, around these factions and how they are stealing money. So that's a area for us to investigate and 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 uncover it, uh, which we will definitely do. Um, and um, we need to get those reports out in the public because they were funded with public money, so the public has a right to know what's what's in those reports. And the time where these factions protect each other um, by not releasing those reports is over. Um, so we will definitely go hard, even if we have to push it through motions in the legislature. Sure. Now, Solly, um, do you feel like the DA would still be open to negotiations by joining the Gauteng uh, government of provincial unity in the in the future uh, and what would the the terms be well we've never really closed the door um, and we want to make it very very clear that the door is not closed but um, you know engaging needs to be done um, in good faith um, two it needs to be done with mutual respect three it needs to be done with respecting uh, you know the voters wishes the voters wishes is that you don't have complete power you don't have absolute power on your own, and therefore you need to then be able to then share power. Um, because had the voters decided that they wanted to give power to a particular party on its own, they would have given them 50 plus 1. But that is not the case. And therefore you now need to then say, how do you then share power? 
Banyazal Sufi went on to the Tlemen Manyatela show last week and said if the DA wanted three or four positions, he is willing to do that. We don't want four. We want three, but three of the positions um, that the ANC that is currently holding. So we don't want the positions that they've already given to the other parties. If they are saying they're willing to talk, let them give us three of the portfolios. They can choose which portfolios that they want. Three. They can keep on four and they can get the premier. So they will still have five. We will get three. They can choose which three. Then we can talk also about how do we deal with dispute resolution. How do we deal with the principle of um, you know engaging in power in decision making? We can engage on the on the principle of holding each other to account, as we said. You know, it's an issue of a give and take. If you're having a DA um, MEC, you should have an ANC um, MEC, who, uh, um, ANC chairperson who's able to then you know keep the balance and make sure that nothing is done. If they want to then engage with us, there should be a lifestyle audit that is conducted on all its MECs. If they want to have a conversation with us, it should be, um, you know, how do we then ensure that you also have officials that are competent to then do the work that needs to be done and not have cadres that are all there that are, you know, just protecting themselves and protecting their salaries and protecting principles that, uh, you know, have actually then been uh, pushing them to be doing wrong. If the ANC is really wanting a province that works, we want that. And these are what we're saying needs to be on the table. And if we can get to that, we are more than happy and open to have a conversation with them. Right. No, perfect. We've got questions uh, coming in from social media. So, Fred, I'll, I'll start with uh, you. Uh, given the fact that the ANC hasn't got in a 50% uh, majority and, and with mm. the cabinet they've announced they still don't have a 50% majority, will the DA be bringing a motion of no confidence against Le Sufi? Um, if so, uh, why? Uh, or will we not be bringing a motion of no confidence against Le Sufi? Uh, and if so, why? Yeah, I think the second part of that question is the question of why is the important thing. You can't, you cannot just bring it just for the sake of bringing a motion of no confidence. I think we need to give them an opportunity to show us what they can do in government. And if they fail in government, then we will bring a motion of no confidence. We, we won't just bring it because we can. Um, mm -hmm. I think that is one of the things that uh, destabilized uh, local governments in the province is because um, people saw an opportunity to push out mayors and become mayors themselves, and therefore they, they did it. That's the wrong reason to bring a motion of no confidence. There must be substance. There must be good reasons. And at this stage, we are not considering a, a motion of no confidence. But um, if they fail, we will definitely bring a motion of no confidence. Okay. And and Sally, do do you feel, given uh, Panyaza and the ANC's relationship with uh, EFF in Gauteng, um, that that we could potentially be seeing in Gauteng uh, an ANC, uh, EFF, and maybe another smaller party coalition? <laughs> you know, I I am seeing a whole lot of uh, moving, um, you know, balls there, you know, that are moving all over, and 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 and. and Parts that are not joining as they're supposed to be joining. I mean, literally today, the EFF voted against the budget uh, or the loan um, that they need in Johannesburg. And these are people that are already in government voting against that. So one is never really sure what is happening on the other end. And this is why we were saying we are offering a stable government going forward. One of the things that I pride myself in as a leader of the DA in Gauteng and leading this pact that I'm leading is that you can be assured of us saying one thing and sticking to it. Yeah. It might sound unpopular. Um, it might sound like, uh, you know, sometimes, you know, people tend to then take our principal stance on particular issues as arrogance, but we're not. We will tell you from the from day one, this is where we stand. And you best believe that this is what we're going to do going forward. And we said we're not going to go into government if it means that, you know, we're going to be sitting in a hallowed position. And I think we've proven it. Um, it's not about solely just sitting in a nice BMW, driven around with blue lights and perks and all of that, if I'm not going to be able to then deliver anything at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. So what will now happen is that there's going to be a lot of instability, as Fred was saying, because that's what minority governments do. They bring a lot of instability. And now you might find that you're now running from this one, coming back because now today they're agreeing with you. Then you go into that one. Today they're agreeing with you. And then you know you, 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 you're you going up and down instead of having a particular standpoint where you're then saying, I'm having a stable government for the next five years. And that's what we were offering, a stable yeah. government for five years. And now you can see, um, you know, the cracks that are beginning to then, uh, you know, uh, uh, play themselves out. 
Dunga um, in Ekuruleni was removed as an MMC. Um, you know, you would know that he holds the highest position in the province for the EFF has been removed. Um, and I think this was the first salvo that was shot um, by the ANC in, in, uh, in, in, uh, in Ekuruleni. We're now seeing, um, you know, the continuation of it playing itself out in in, uh, in Johannesburg today when they're supposed to have passed, um, you know, a report that sees them, you know, getting into a loan, which means that Johannesburg is now in trouble because in 30 days time, creditors are going to be knocking um, um, or debtors are going to be knocking on the, on, on the door um, and are going to be demanding their money. And then, then you know, it means that you're having a government there that is A, broke, but B, that is not able to then agree amongst itself. So will that also then play itself in terms of the relationship at a provincial level? That remains to be seen. But from where the DA stands, we were offering, you know, that kind of stability. And unfortunately, um, you know, it hasn't been met, um, you know, um, with, with, with similar um, a mindset. It hasn't been met with, uh, with, with a similar outlook. And hopefully, you know, people might still be able to then get around the table and find a solution to the the problem that we're sitting with and uh, you know how thing is going to be sitting with a big problem if uh, we're going to rely on uh, borrowing from from paul to pay tom and tom to you know to do a deal with uh, with Johannes. it's yeah. not going to work yeah uh, uh, fred we have another question um what powers will the da have in the opposition benches it seems people are worried that uh, we won't be able to fight against corruption and that that we might be mm. toothless well, I think that the DA has got a proud track record of being an effective opposition where we've uncovered um, numerous um, mis, mis, well, corruption, fraud and these kind of things in terms of government. So we've got the power to, to uncover it. But um, we've also shown that we can drive issues over a very long period of time. I mean, no other party has, has driven an issue as long as we have, um, for instance, state capture. The very first person to ever have uttered the word state capture was Helen Ziller in, I think, 2009. Um, and uh, look where that ended um, because of our consistent pressure, our consistent court cases that we engaged the government in. We forced them to, to bring the commission, the state capture commission, into being, um, and that uncovered a lot of rot. Um, they haven't acted on that, and that would be obviously our next step is to make sure that there's action on that. Same with uh, ETOLs. Um, we drove that issue also since 2009, um, and that issue might very soon be resolved in total. Um, there life, are still, is it life is a Domeni was also what we uncovered, uh, where people lost their lives. Um, and um, it was all, all those were because of the DA um, that was a vigilant opposition that uncovered these things. Mm -hmm. And um, whether we whether we do it within the legislative processes or whether we go to court um, using our party's money to take the government to court, um, we will use whatever means is available to us to do it. Um, but I think the very first thing is to bring it out in the open so that everybody can see it. Um, and if we don't do it, I'm afraid nobody else is going to do it. Sure. Now, Soli, someone is asking, uh, what role did the wasted votes play? in the type of negotiations that we had here um, in Gauteng, speaking specifically to parties that were voted for but didn't end up with any seats, apparently 100,000 plus. Uh, what, what impact did that have on the negotiations? So in Gauteng, uh, if you were to then calculate the number of votes that uh, you know would have contributed to seats, to seats you, you, you actually have an additional five seats. Five. Five seats that, uh, you know, th those votes now mean absolutely nothing because they didn't contribute to electing people. Now, you know, somebody, when I did this analysis and I wrote about it, somebody says, but what guarantee do you have that these votes would have gone to, um, you know, to the DA? I said, no, that's not the point. The point is that now you have five, um, you know, additional uh, 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 seats that could have um, gone either way, but that could have meant parties that would have had a voice in the legislature contributing to the change that, uh, you know, the people of South Africa and the people of Gauteng in particular, in this instance, would have, um, you know, um, benefited from. And now you're not benefiting from that. And I think this is a conversation that we're still going to need to then have as a, as a country and as a province to then say, what, do you, what does your vote mean? Yeah. You know, what does your vote mean? And, 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 and are we just going to continue to vote uh, you know, out of excitement? Or are we going to look at certain things? Track record? We're going to look at uh, manifestos, analyze those manifestos. Are we going to be able to then look at um, the structures that the parties do have? Because some parties then, you know, just pop up 
and because they are popular on social media, then you know they get a vote or two, but that vote doesn't really translate too much because then they don't get a seat because there have been social media uh, you know parties that really don't uh, really translate to too, too much on the ground. So it's, it's, it's when you start analyzing those and then you said, well, if I'm going to vote for a party, what am I expecting? And I'm glad that you know the, the democracy in South Africa is maturing to a point where there's never a therefore now. There's not going to be going forward. I can guarantee you there will never be a therefore. Uh, you know we have won. It, you know it's an issue of by what margin. Voters are now becoming more critical of what the political parties say. They're becoming more critical of what political parties do, mm -hmm. and this is why we are not ever going to take the people that vote for us uh, for granted. If we feel that something is not going to work for them, we're not going to do it. If we feel that something is not going to, you know, impact their lives in a positive way, we're not going to do it. And this is why, you know, um, the, the, the enticement of, um, you know, grand offices and, and, and VIP protection and all of that, that's, that is not even in our radar. What is in our radar is how do you then effect the change that you want to then effect. And that's what also voters must then start to analyze are people just readily and eagerly just waiting for positions and to jump into positions mm -hmm. and find that once they're in those positions their contribution is actually zero or meaningless then the voters must then decide do you want to continue with the same or do you want to vote for a party or parties that will be able to then bring in the impact the maximum impact in terms of the positions and the mandate that you're giving them now uh, fred we have a question here what what impact do you think uh, this will have on the 2026 municipal elections in Gauteng? Yeah, that's a very good question. Um, you know, your next election always starts once the previous election is done. So on the 30th of May, we started with a new one towards 2026. Um, I would hope that, um, let me put it this way, I don't think we're going to get away from coalitions in the future. Yeah. And what we're going to need in coalitions is going to be maturity. And voters need to take note of what happened in 2021 uh, in those local government elections. And voters need to take note of what happened in the 2024 elections. And they need to make a choice as to who are the parties they want in coalitions in local governments in Gauteng after the 2026 elections. And who will be the most mature parties to lead those coalitions to ensure that there's going to be good delivery. And we will obviously go with our offer to the voters because I believe that we've got a good track record of delivering. We've got a track record in that's developing in Chwane, for instance, where we're showing that we can also turn municipalities around that's in trouble. And we know that Joburg and Ikuruleni is in extremely bad trouble at the moment. Um, and um, and Infuleni as well. And these are all municipalities where we will be competing for, for power in 2026. And, you know, we just spoke about the wasted votes of parties that received votes that did not get representation in the Gauteng legislature. Um, yes, those votes may not necessarily have come to the DA, but the votes also didn't go to the ANC, which shows that those were opposition votes. And um, you've got to unite be behind a strong opposition party like the DA and rather strengthen us than taking the risk of a small party not making it into a municipality that where you live and not being able to represent you. You also want parties who can represent you on all the portfolio committees. You want parties who's going to have skills to um, take mayoral committee portfolios and, and manage those and mm. make sure that their service delivery, bring honesty back mm. to these administrations so that the stealing stops and that, that you've got money for service delivery because that's a big crisis in, in Gauteng at the moment. The money for service delivery has dried up. Yeah. And the only way you're going to you're gonna change that is in places like Joburg, Ikerleni and Enfuleni is by bringing in a new government and not staying with the status quo. So I think um, a lot at stake for 2026. Um, and I hope that, you know, I think that the, that the biggest impact that you asked about is going to be that voters are now going to sit up, notice the coalition environment and say, hang on, we are going to have to vote tactically uh, and we're going to have to vote in a different way to make sure that these coalitions actually work out and that we don't have the chaos that we have in Joburg and Ikuruleni in 2026. Yeah. Now, Sally, you know, there's a, a lot of 
DA voters and South Africans that were quite excited uh, about the, the announcement of yeah. the government of national unity. What what would your message be to any DA voters in Gauteng that, that may feel somewhat disappointed that the DA hasn't been able to form government here? Well, generally, the people of South Africa are very, uh, um, call it um, united, um, uh, uh, they believe in unity. Um, and, and, and this is why, and this is how we started um, this the conversation in Gauteng, because we were all urging for that. We were all pushing and rooting for a, a government of, 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 of unity, whether it's at a provincial or a national level. And the DA is still committed to that, uh, to that, uh, to that, uh, 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 to that journey, if you like. What we want to say to the people of Gauteng is that we've had your cry. You, you've said you want to change. If you didn't, you wouldn't have given us the mandate that you have given us. And we don't take that mandate lightly. Yeah. And we're not going to use that mandate to our own benefit. It's easy. Me and this man, we're sitting in the negotiating room. We could have easily said, oh, well, you're getting a portfolio. I'm getting a portfolio. Let's get on with the offices. Let's travel the world, build globe trotters. Let's enjoy the best. And then, you know, we'll see the voters in five years' time. We didn't do that. We went in there and we said, these are the principles that will best serve our people. And if they're, they're not going to be, uh, you know, be adhered to, or if we cannot find each other along those, then unfortunately we would be failing our people. So I can tell you the people that voted for the DA must analyze and understand that what we are doing is for the best, not only for those that voted for the DA only, but for the whole province. Because we are not willing to continue with the same, uh, you know, uh, modus operandi that has been there for the last uh, 30 years. Mm -hmm. We are saying we want change and we want to work towards bringing change. And we were thinking that those that are in government will have an understanding to then say the voters want this. And if the voters want this, let's then start pulling some brakes and then bringing people that we can work together to then implement the change. And therefore, if they don't want to do it, we'll still do it from an opposition perspective. There are budgets that are going to come. If the budgets are not going to talk to what we want to then see being delivered, we're not going to vote for that. We're going, or actually going to then um, you know, uh, lobby other political parties as well to then say, how do we then support budgets that are not talking to the dreams and aspirations of the people of Gauteng? There are reports that we want to then see um, you know, being served in the legislature and actually then being put out there in the public. If we are not going to be able to then do that, and we would have been failing the the, 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 the idea of, of what government you know should be doing and what the, the, the voters are saying to us. So we take our mandate very, very seriously. Whether we're doing it from a position of, of, of being in the cabinet or whether we're doing it from an opposition perspective, we take that mandate very, very seriously. We take the, the idea of saving people very, very seriously. And this is why I want to then say to the people of Gauteng, your votes are not lost. And your votes and your interest is best, um, you know, um, served, um, you know, with us taking a principle stance to then say if government is going to work, we'll work, you know, with these principles. And if government is not going to work with these principles, then we will force them through an opposition perspective or from an opposition side to make sure that they do what needs to be done. Okay. Fred, in closing, what would your final message be to the residents of Gauteng? <laughs> yeah, just to latch on to what Soli said is uh, a strong DA is, in the, is, is also in the interest of Gauteng and South Africa. Um, we've been the party that's been protecting voters um, since 1994 and we were still the DP with only seven MPs and look where we are now and we've got a proud track record of, of protecting voters and whether we protect voters in government or, or opposition, you will always get that service from us and you will always get that protection from us. So it is as much important that we are strong in opposition um, as it is that we are you know, make, contributing to a stable government. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yes, people may be disappointed, but, you know, the DA will be in a stronger position if we get more votes and we come out as a stronger party to lead a coalition and not having to negotiate to become a partner uh, with a party who doesn't really want us as a partner. And um, we would be more open and um, I think more fair in the way that we that we will deal with other parties if we were the ones negotiating the coalition as a, as, a, as the main party in that coalition. And I think that's what we need to strive for going forward. We didn't get a majority in this election. We didn't get the, we ended second. 
and that always puts you in a slightly weaker position. And but we are absolutely committed to 2026 and 2029 to to grow even more and to become that leading party in future coalitions. Okay. Sali, your final message to the residents of Khartoum? Well, my final message, first of all, the, f the message that I want to put in is a challenge to the ANC is that if you're serious about engaging with, uh, you know, with the DA and, and negotiate in good faith, we are availing ourselves, myself and Fred, and uh, the team will avail ourselves to come and sit around the table so that we can come up uh, you know, with, a, with a solution in terms of how we serve the people of Gauteng and serve them so that they are able to then prosper and their lives can change for the better. So we're still saying to you, we are very much available and committed to that engagement. To the people of South Africa and particularly the people of Gauteng, we will serve you, um, whether we have to do it from a, 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 a cabinet position, a government position, we have to do it from an opposition uh, position. One thing you can be rest assured around is that the DA will never, ever sell, its, sell itself um, and sell its soul just to, uh, you know, uh, for, for uh, breadcrumbs around the table. We will make sure that at the end of the day, you are best served, whether we're doing it from a position of uh, being in government or from a position of being in the opposition. We will always ask what is in the best interest of our voters? What is in the best interest of the people of South Africa and the people of Houghton, whether you are a DA voter or you're not? Because ultimately, you know, it sh it, it's all about the uh, the prosperity of, uh, of, of our province and the prosperity of South Africa that we all live in a much more safer, much more healthier, much more educated, much more, uh, you know, traveled, um, you know, country. Uh, because, you know, you cannot talk about how do you deal with infrastructure, how do you deal with health, how do you deal with the issues of safety and security, how do you deal with social ills, if we're not having a government that is committed to saving you. So we will save you as best as we can. We are committed to making sure that there is a government that works and that works for you. And best believe that we will do each and everything that is in our power to make sure that you are safe and that your votes and those that are still considering the DA as a potential um, you know um, a political party of choice you can be assured that the DA will remain principled the DA will not shy away from holding the government to account if we are in opposition but more importantly we will always listen and we'll make sure that your aspirations your dreams find expression in what this government do whether we're doing it from a government perspective or we're doing it from an opposition perspective and we are starting now with a campaign towards the 2026 and towards the 2029 elections we are going to be hitting the streets we're going to be talking to you about what is happening what has happened and what is the plan then going forward and then we will make sure that we deliver on the promises that we've made to you. Thank you, Gwen. Sally, thank you. Fred, thank you. Thank you to sure. the viewers that were watching at home. Uh, I hope that this was an insightful conversation. Uh, and if you felt that it was, please like and share this broadcast with your friends and family. Let's let's spread the message. Let's spread the hope, uh, whether it's in opposition or whether it's in government, the DA will continue to fight for you here in Gauteng.